Hello Nigate fans, I do love puzzle games since they do really make you think and sadly is one of the more underappreciated genres since people do love the shooty shooty bang bang fun of a first person shooter, which is why I absolutely love Portal 2 since it made a huge number of people who are not normally into puzzle games at least give the genre a shot. If you want to feel old, Valve's classic will be 10 years old by April, so maybe we'll see something new from them, but in the meantime, here are 10 must-play indie games to check out. Welcome to The OG first-person puzzle title is Myst, released in 1993, which has without a doubt inspired its fair share of games in the genre. So when the original developer announced that they were making a new game, it was big news. So enter Obduction. It's a trippy adventure where a mysterious falling object from the sky caused you to be abducted across the universe with a number of surreal, otherworldly and alien landscapes to explore. Similar tinkering and exploring the environment form the core of the puzzles, and for a 2016 game, it doesn't look that bad visually as well. Cube 2 is also of interest and is perhaps the most portal-like title on this list, only instead of thinking with portals, you are playing with cubes. Manipulate these with a pair of gloves, where the different colour options gives the cubes different properties. There are fun physics-y elements here, and while it isn't as much of a masterpiece as Portal, it still might be of interest. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. Now, I've included a number of adventure ish titles into the list as well, which is perhaps not as puzzle focused, but nonetheless makes you think. And one of the best to do so is The Stanley Parable. Starting life as a mod for Half-Life 2 using the Source engine, this was one of the earliest meta-narrative titles where there is an in-game narrator that will give you instructions, but should you choose to go against these, the narrator will react accordingly. Very clever with multiple endings, it's a no-brainer pick for the list. Stanley is quite a bore. Stanley for the first time. Stanley realized so Stanley had never seen Stanley the office. Stanley, 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 <laughs> oh, come now. You don't want it to end already, do you? Why don't we begin again? One of the more recent entries on the list is Manifold Garden one which explores the concept of infinity with the impossible MC Escher light structures and environments. This one's real easy on the eyes, and is a must play for fans of architecture, where the gravity defying puzzles are head stretching as well.
so very impressed with the look and how things loop around, used very cleverly in the puzzles, and comes recommended by me. Who will you be, our children? Will you love us for having created you? Will the world you build be like ours? So different One of the most surprising entries imagine. at the time was the Talos Principle, coming Step to us from developer Pro Team, who are most famous for the, Is shall we say, mindless we fun of Series 7. I listened to an curiosity. interview with this developer, who noted Our that they wanted to flex their development chops, not simply making knowledge. one FPS after the next, and what came out of that is very impressive indeed. My child, you may go freely to all the worlds of my garden. But if the tower tempts you, be wise. Do not let yourself be misled by doubt. For it shall bring death and the end of your generations. It has you diverting lasers and drones, moving objects and more, with a philosophical story of AI and consciousness which is pretty good. Another recent entry is the perspective bending superliminal, where it very cleverly plays with depth. If you've noticed that things appear smaller the further away from you they are, this game revolves around that exact concept where you're picking up and moving things around, releasing your grip, at which point the new size takes effect. Clever puzzles and even plays with optical illusions and aligning of fractured pieces of a painting, it's really trippy and worth a play, and since it came to Steam, it did include workshop support as well. One of the highlights from the early days of indie gaming is Antichamber, one of the trippiest and mind-boggling first-person puzzle games where up is down, red is blue, and you go round and round. I'm sure that this too has influenced its fair share of indie games, perhaps having some lineage into the aforementioned Manifold Garden, but the laws of physics don't quite work in the same way. It uses non-Euclidean geometry, which if I'm understanding correctly, is math speak for this world is f crazy, but another very cleverly designed game. I have an admiration for developer Lucas Pope since he basically put out two commercial products in a span of five years with both being critically acclaimed and commercially successful, and is primarily a solo developer as well, so as they say, living the dream. You bastards may take exactly what I give you! Come on before she kicks off! His latest from 2018 is The Return of the Obra Dinn, where you play as an insurance adjuster and have to figure out what happened on board this ship, one which vanished in 1802 and mysteriously appeared at a port in 1807. You do have a mystical pocket watch that lets you look into the past, where you do have to figure out who died by what means and by whom, and is a little bit macabre in that way. Striking art style as well, which is a plus, but another must-play title. These trade ships, these tendermen, not much keeping them above water, but planks of wood and the grace of God. Only surprise about the Obradin, 
It's come back. Empty. While developer Jonathan Blow does have a certain reputation, I do have to give him his dues with The Witness from 2016, having made my best games of the year list and being an ingenious one of these. Everyone points to how mist-like this game is since you are roaming around an island solving puzzles, but the twist is that all the puzzles here are line mazes but you need to figure out the rules and logic behind the puzzle. On top of that, you are exploring an island with some mind-bending moments that I will not spoil, but is an excellent example of awesome puzzle design solely focused on just one thing but using it in so many clever ways. And the must-play title is the confusingly named Outer Worlds, not the Fallout-like RPG, but the No Man's Sky-like space exploration title. I told you folks that I have a soft spot for time loop titles, as is the case here, where every time you die, you do reawaken at the same campfire, but retain the knowledge gained from the previous life, allowing you to bypass a previous obstacle and eventually get into space to explore similar concepts on a wide variety of planets. The handcrafted nature of this is excellent since each planet is unique, hiding lore, backstory, and of course, puzzles. Sure, it's more adventure gamey, but the meta layer here is impressive, although I have seen some people compare this to Majora's Mask, but regardless of your feeling towards that game, I certainly encourage you to check this out, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos, and I will see you after the jump.